Rainworld is a good game. It's a very good game. And despite its criminally low ratings from the game reviewers, it has accumulated a passionate and devoted following. Like many, I adore this game. Everything about it, its art, gameplay and exploration is incredibly well thought out and implemented. And Rainworld was mostly made by two people. Its existence and quality is amazing. Okay, before I continue, here's the pitch. You are a small slug cat, taken from your family from one of the deafening rainstorms. You must survive on your own in the broken industrial ecosystem, evading predators and finding food. If this sounds cool to you, go watch an actual review, because this video has spoilers. Great. Now let's discuss scale. Rainworld builds atmosphere wonderfully, with its environments from small to large. And we'll get to the large, trust me, but I want to explore how Rainworld uses single rooms and artwork first. Immersive is a term tossed around when describing games before, but what does it really mean? Generating a three-dimensional image which appears to surround the user- What? Shut up, Google. Okay, it actually means involving a player in a game, so they are absorbed in the world and narrative. However, large umbrella terms like this can refer to a lot of things in actual game design. Are the graphics realistic? How good is the story? Do you feel like Spider-Man? But for this video, I primarily want to talk about how a game builds an atmosphere for environments. And because environments are what the player is looking at all the time in Rainworld, they are great for engaging the player and building immersion. Each room in Rainworld is built of several seamless layers. While some regions use a flat colour for the background to emulate blinding fog, a lot of rooms stretch far, far back to reveal monolithic structures and landmasses. The game uses separate lighting and shadows for the different layers, giving the 2D art depth. Light even filters down through off-screen openings to illuminate each cavity in the metal structures around you. While some rooms use tight tunnels and only one background layer to emulate claustrophobia, other spaces open up to present large halls. Even an absence of background objects gives a stunning scale of the world, as if each room could continue on forever. This room in outskirts cleverly uses its background and space in the map to suggest it is part of some huge ravine in the industrial buildings, stretching further than can be seen. Finding mysterious places like this makes you wonder what is behind each screen transition. How you traverse through the rooms is crucial too. Some levels require you to scan your surroundings to find tunnels and poles, you have to look carefully at the highly detailed environments to play the game. And can we just talk about this pixel art? While pixel art can sometimes seem like the cheaper, more efficient option for an art style, Rainworld uses it purely for artistic value. Some of these backgrounds would probably be easier to make if they weren't drawn in the hyper-detailed pixel style. The designers really know how to push a medium to its absolute limits. Each and every brick, duct, tunnel, pit, vine and puddle belongs in this world, but the constant flow of new ideas and vivid colour schemes of areas keeps everything fresh. Pixels on the walls and floors melt into the borders, and corroded metal decays downwards where it has been shaped by the rains. Graffiti is plastered over the walls and along sewers. Graffiti from whoever built all this. These marks from a long dead civilization incite wonder at what they were. Some designs are completely abstract, others seem vaguely familiar. The world isn't just vast in the depth of its environments, the scale of the past is important too. Sound also plays an important role in creating this atmosphere. Rocks and spears feel powerful as they hiss through the air. Water trickles into gaps naturally, and electricity buzzes and simmers. The sound is mixed to perfection as well. Sometimes all you can hear is Slugcat's quiet footsteps on dusty surfaces, then explosions being far louder than footsteps nearly clip the game's audio and leave a whining linger afterwards. And the music just goes. A soundscape that perfectly replicates the feel of this massive industrial jungle, from echoing spiritual vocals to... Each of these aspects are about the scale in the minute, background depth in each room, the detail of spaces, and the quiet loneliness of footfall. They all lend to an appreciation of the small, each room is segmented from the others through pipes or camera cuts. It is an immersion focused on the small details in the world. But why does Rainworld do this, encouraging the player to be so immersed in their immediate surroundings? Well, so Rainworld can then do this. 
There are two points in the game where the sense of scale balloons massively out of proportion. The first is five pebbles. So far, each region in the game has felt separate and contained. Each has their own story and theme. A leech infested sewer, vulture proud skyscrapers, and a rotting ocean. But once you reach the shaded citadel, this changes. The spider infested hallways and connecting memory crypts are overshadowed by something huge. Then you find the leg, a tower that whirs with noise. The rain cannot reach you here, instead electrical surges ravage through the clinging ecosystem. But what blocks the rain from this region? Well, it is called the leg, after all. After scaling the tower, you reach the underhang, a long horizontal strip of bare geometry that looms out of the dark abyss below and mass above. There is a hole in the ceiling, an access point into the belly of the beast. Five Pebbles begins with more claustrophobic tunnels, a squeeze through the thick shell deeper into the machine, because it is a machine now, not just a shadow on the world. Background art, more detailed than ever, reveals turbines and vents, an interconnected mass of tiny pipes and wires, and then you find an open room, and there's no gravity. I love the atmosphere of this area. It has very few hazards, just a maze of groaning sounds and fluttering particles. Some of the rooms are huge shafts and halls, neon lights and shadows that dance deep into the layers of art that you could get lost in for hours. The start of Five Pebbles feels like an old industrial factory. You peer into the dark of ancient machines that you cannot comprehend the scale of. And then it gets weird. Past a mass of biological rocks, you reach a clean, clinical place. White panels on the walls that are so bright after the dark previously, I can barely see. Red tendrils form something, and glowing flies swim in circles. But the black windows were what shocked me the most. Paired with the zero gravity, it seemed like I was in space. There was no logical reason that I was that high, but it deepened how alien this region feels. It isn't fully grounded in reality. And then there's this room. This room is incredible in so many ways, the art, the music, but I don't want to talk about it any further because there's a great video by Alex Pine talking just about this room. Go watch it, it's really good. In the center of the general systems bus is the avatar of the machine, and then it puts a computer chip in your brain and talks to you about escape from a cyclone and shoves you out into a tunnel. This isn't graffiti. It's a tapestry. For the first time in what seems like ages, the world is quiet. You are higher than almost any creature before you, and you come out onto the top. It's a city, spindly stacked, piled so high and so crowded, it looks dusty, barren and arid. But it's a city. Nothing before could even be considered a habitable space. Normally, games build their worlds to make it seem like people could live there. Up to this point, Rainworld was in defiance to that rule. And now when you're at the closest you've ever been to some kind of answer, it lays in the distance, turning to dust. High above the rains, this flat desert plain, an empty city looms in the horizon. You do not understand. You are so alone. But reaching the edge of this land, you can see behind it. And you realize that this mass of pipes and poles and creatures and cities is just one of hundreds of worlds that stretch along the curvature of the planet peeking out of the thick cloud layer. Green satellites prick the dark sky as a moon dwindles above. The world we live upon is so immeasurably big and this moment at the top of the wall captures this quiet aloneness. The beautiful sound design and art build a sense of awe Rainworld has set up this immersion of singular paces and rooms so it could shatter everything with sheer scale. The second part in the game that breaks scale is the ending. And I'm not even going to waste your time here. In the end of the game, you descend into a crypt far below the earth and throw yourself into an underground infinite sea of void. The ground melts into gold as it meets the sea the camera unlocks from its static restraints, 
or you have a small slug cap for a sense of proportion. As you swim lower, thin strands whip up to you and bodies of twisting giant worm things limitlessly stretch into the depths. One of these eldritch horrors takes notice. It's massive. Only the very top of its form fills the screen with a golden haze. It seems more inquisitive than malevolent though, and grabs you and screams you down. The music swells so loud it almost hurts, and the slug cat is distorted and stretched as the world shakes around you. The worm leaves you in the pitch black. As you swim blindly, you join a group of others. Whether they are real or not, they are others. And then you reach the light. It's home. Brain World is a game that starts with the small and ends with it as well. You have been on this journey full of awe and insignificance, but Rain World will always remain a game about your experience and tiny place in the world. Hey there, thank you so much for watching my video. I've been wanting to make it for a long time now. I'd also like to thank others who have made great videos on this amazing game for inspiring me to make this one. And to Video Cult, thank you so much for Rain World, and I can't wait for Downpour. 